everybody needs to have. All right, thank you so much for that, Jimmy. And that conversation will be going on in our Transform Kenya uh, program today it's from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., where we will also delve deeper into the global competitiveness. We'll look at energy. We'll look at export-led growth and agriculture for industry and also SME development. And we'll have more from the Kenya Association of Manufacturers when it comes to these issues and also the tax impact. And Noah Kipkemboy will be hosting that and also will be having our reporters uh, trying to just come in with a conversation from different angles. Right now, let us continue. Agrotourism is a niche form of tourism that involves any agricultural based operation or activity that brings visitors to farms, plantations or ranches. In Campbell County, where dairy farming is the most popular agricultural activity, this form of tourism is slowly picking up as farmers have realized the benefits as they can earn an extra source of income come by charging visitors gate fees. Our reporter Paul Viongo visited the Fire Eco Farm in Gadanji sub-county and filed the following report. A lot of us think that tourism involves a visit to the beach or a game park to see wild animals. These, of course, are a lot of fun, but a new form of local tourism involving farm excursions is slowly taking root in the country. A visit to the Fire Eco Farm in Gadanje village of Kiambu County revealed this to be a venture farmers are willing to invest in as more people become interested in agriculture. Susan Kimwaki, the founder of the farm, is a seasoned tours expert. She says the idea was conceived after the tourism industry was nearly brought to its knees during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our village, every home is practicing dairy cows. Uh, my mom has a few. I don't have a problem with that, but I thought, why can't I do things differently? And my mission to come up with this fire farm is to show the world, show the people that we can do we can make we can spice up agriculture agriculture is the backbone of our country but how do we make it a real backbone so i thought why don't i do various practices at fire Farm and work with nature <laughs> Here, you're welcomed by the honking of geese and the songs of weaver birds. The farm hosts rabbits and a range of ornamental birds. They also pride in practicing mixed crop farming grown organically and served at the restaurant. Then we have organic, healthy farming and then we have the tour part or the fun part whereby you come and experience as we, we sell experiences of fire eco farm for example we have a farm to table restaurant we have a swimming pool we have a a, a, a mild stream nature trail to the to the to the small or to the small trail that we have so when you come here you are expecting us to teach you how to use small spaces in farming. We are, you are expecting us to come and teach you about rabbit keeping. We have ornamental birds like pigeons. We have geese and ducks. And in all of that, when we combine that, you come up with a whole package of what I call agrotourism. Wakati <laughs> huu, masa hii mekua kimi makidogo, afadhali hii, saru hii diyo mzuri sana. Kwa mana utakua unafanda kila kitu. Nyanya, boga, sukuma, spinaji, terere, Maharagwe, ya, ya, ya odi muhimu kulikuwa ya zamani. Hata ukua huna shamba, unaweka kwa mangunia, unasukua paket, unaweka mchanga. Ni musuri sana weka kwa paket, unanua vivibu, unaweka, unakaya, unaweka. Kwa hivyo, mutu eseme hana shamba. Setting up this kind of farm is not an easy job. It requires substantial capital investment, time, and according to Susan, a lot of patience. First started by transforming the land. Because from where we are standing all the way to the river, uh, my, pa my parents were, had planted trees and some parts coffee. So I, have trans I, I started by transforming and organizing the land, uh, setting up different stations, have different stations of uh, beans, uh, the orchard for fruits. Uh, we have coffee, on the other hand, we have vegetables. It has not been an easy journey. 
but it has been enjoyable because I'm so passionate about nature. When you come here, one, you unwinding, you relax. Secondly, it's, you learn each and every new day. What you didn't know, or how I started uh, transforming the land last year, I am better. You learn, it's a learning process. The farm also doubles as a teaching and training facility for school going children and the neighboring community. I'm trying to teach uh, the youth that everything is a process because you, as, as you have seen from Fire Echo Farm, everything is a process. From where I started last year is not where I am. I started by transforming. So it's a process, it's a journey. Other activities include camping, workshops on community-based tourism and arts, and developing a marketing program for rural tourism products. <laughs> Agro-tourism in Kenya has not been exploited to its full potential as farmers have no knowledge or information on how to position their farms to attract visitors who would like to learn from their enterprises. There is a great potential to growing this sector as farmers and investors from across Africa and beyond would like to learn about successful agricultural enterprises. Reporting for KTN News, I'm Paul Thiongo. Right now, the story from Paul Biongo takes us to a short break. We'll be back with more. Remember, today we are talking about the e-mobility and also sustainability in the e-mobility, speaking about the charging stations, and we'll be delving deeper into this, and we'll be joined by Iyadi Omurembe, who is the CEO, uh, EV Charger. Don't go too far.